The Significance of Zane's Trace Traveling down the roads of Ohio, most people are unaware that we literally travel along the paths of history. Understanding where others have led us and where we are now helps us to have a better awareness of the direction we need to travel to get to where we want to go. This is true whether it is traveling through space, as in a road, or in what we experience in the passage of time, as in yesterday's, as well as tomorrow's history. The significance of Zane's Trace, Ohio's first major road, is better understood within the context of the history at the time of its construction. Colonel Ebenezer Zane was from a family of six children, five brothers and one sister. Prior to the creation of Zane's Trace, the colonel was a well-known pioneer, Indian scout, soldier, and merchant. In 1769, Zane and his brothers, Silas and Jonathan, founded Fort Fincastle, later renamed Fort Henry, and then Wheeling, West Virginia. In the American Revolution years of 1777 to 1782, Zane and his brothers defended Fort Henry against Indian attacks. In 1796, Colonel Zane received permission from Congress to build a road, the first in Ohio's history. Colonel Zane had traveled much of the Northwest Territory, so he was familiar with the land and had already chosen his route. Colonel Zane agreed to have it completed in just one year. Large numbers of settlers were expected to migrate to Ohio after the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794 and the Treaty of Greenville in 1795. The dangerous threat of Indians had been nearly eliminated at that point. Transportation at that time was mostly by river, foot, or horseback. River transportation was difficult due to spring floods, low water levels in the summer, large sandbars, and winter ice formations. River pirates were an additional hazard. In addition, the waterways did not reach the middle of the state. In this period, prior to steamboats and the construction of canals, flatboatmen would walk through the wilderness on their return trip. Colonel Zane demonstrated the ingenuity and ambition of the early Ohio leaders by seizing the opportunity to acquire land and opportunities for business. By providing a need, needed service at the time, the construction of Ohio's first road, he negotiated and received three 640-acre parcels of land in lieu of payment. Colonel Zane was due to the land as a veteran. However, it was the location of the land that Zane sought. Colonel Zane proposed the idea of land in lieu of a monetary payment because he knew that the federal government did not have much revenue at the time. The federal government required him to survey his plots at his own expense. He chose land positioned at different points where the road would cross the Muskegon, Hocking, and Scioto rivers. He realized that these locations would be trading and transportation points, and he could benefit by providing ferry services on both sides of the river. Additionally, Colonel Zane was granted the rights to sell land at those river crossings that became Chillicothe, Lancaster, and Zanesville. Zane began to cut the path that was to become Zane's Trace even prior to its approval by Congress. After receiving the construction bid, however, he assembled a work crew that consisted of himself, his brother Jonathan, brother-in-law John McIntyre, and a few other hired hands, totaling six to eight men. They were equipped with pack horses, tents, and provisions. Game hunting, common among frontiersmen, was a primary source of food for the crew. Zane used the services of an Indian guide who helped him plan the route for the road. They followed paths used by the Native American Indians, the Mingo tribe, whenever possible. Zane's trace was by no means the shortest route between the two points of Wheeling, West Virginia, part of the Northwest Territory, and Maysville, Kentucky, at the time known as Limestown, Kentucky. However, it took advantage of high ridges, which was good for drainage and defense. It had scenic areas at points and passed Indian mounds, such as the Serpent Mound. It followed the Wheeling Creek's north bank, then up and down a mountain ridge, followed the Old Mingo Trail till it reached the Muskegon River, then going southwest to the Hawking River, south to the Scioto River, and finally crossing to Maysville in Kentucky. 
Zane's Trace was a distance of 266 miles. However, this was 100 miles shorter than by river. This was all territory that was not yet settled, with the exception of Chillicothe. The road that Zane originally constructed was merely wide enough to permit a rider on a horse to travel. Travel by wagon was not possible until Congress authorized and funded, at a cost of $15 per mile, the 1804 widening of the road to 20 feet. This expansion included the addition of logs laid to cross marshy areas and the construction of a number of bridges. Zane's original road was crudely constructed with axes. It had ruts, was uneven, and even left tree stumps in the middle of the road that were less than one foot high, since wagon axles could clear that height. However, this primitive road was important to Ohio's development. Zane's Trace created a means of transportation for the settlement of people and the distribution of trade goods that would support the expanding population. The federal government used it immediately after its completion for a mail route from Fort Henry, now Wheeling, to Maysville. Wills Creek was the site of Zane's first ferry location. Flatboat men were among the first to use the road, either by foot or by horse, to return to towns upriver from New Orleans as far north as Pittsburgh. Zane's Trace was key to the development of the southern half of Ohio that occurred soon after its construction. Towns and businesses such as inns and taverns developed along the new road. Most of the people settling along the road were farmers who shipped their products to market via the river system reaching as far south as New Orleans. A town that developed at the mouth of the Licking River where Zane had built a trading post and ferry service was eventually named Zanesville. Zane sold his land holdings in Zanesville in 1800. Acting as his attorneys, his son Noah and John plotted the town and sold lots. German settlers, mostly from Pennsylvania, used the road to migrate and settle in Lancaster. Homesteaders filled nearly every mile of the road by 1807. People referred to the road by a variety of names such as the Wheeling Road, the Wheeling Limestone Road, and the Limestone Road instead of Zane's Trace. Later, it was called the New State Road and the Great State Road from Pittsburgh. Maps at that time called it the Wheeling Road. In 1811, Colonel Ebenezer Zane died and was buried in Martins Ferry. Zane's Trace remained Ohio's only major road up until the War of 1812. The National Road, also known as State Route 40, was extended in the 1820s from Cumberland, Maryland to Wheeling. In 1830, Zane's Trace became a part of the National Road between Wheeling and Zanesville. During the construction and extension west, the National Road took a more direct route from Wheeling to the Mississippi, with the exception of Vandalia, Illinois. Therefore, the National Road used only some of the path of Zane's Trace. Today, Route 40 includes the original path of Zane's Trace from Zanesville to New Concord, except for a section at the Zanesville Airport. Like the original road, it is narrow and winding. Additional segments can be found in Belmont, Guernsey, and Muskegon counties. Old markers for the historic road can be found along the side of the newer State Route 40, where it follows the path of Zane's Trace. The old markers for Zane's Trace and State Route 40's path from Zanesville to New Concord are among the few visible remains of Zane's Trace. Newer historic markers such as these honors Colonel Zane's road to Ohio's development, but chronicles only a brief portion of the story which signifies its importance in Ohio's history.